All right, today I'm going to a place I've never been before called Blue Cypress Lake. It's the largest lake in Vero Beach. This place is supposed to be good for all kinds of wildlife. I'm gonna go find out if that's true. Oh my goodness, there's a swallowtail kite flying right above me. I gotta see if I can get a picture. He's, oh, here he comes. This will be cool. And this is what I was after. This is the awesome swallowtailed kite. One of my favorite birds. I, I know I say that a lot about birds, but I have a lot of favorite birds. It's very easy to understand how these birds get the name kite when you see one flying. They, there's like no effort at all and they appear to just be floating in the sky. Because they don't move too quickly, they're not that difficult to photograph in the air, but because they're always up in the sky, it's always very difficult to get a good shot with a lot of light on them. So in these, I cranked my exposure compensation up because this one was flying towards me and the sun was behind it. That let me get a little bit of a better exposure, but in the end, I was really waiting for this bird to turn and face its wings into the light like this shot here and I finally got it at the end so you can really see some good light on the bird. You generally see these birds because they're flying around and, and it makes it easy to see them and it's very rare to actually see them perched. So I watched this one for a little while and it flew back into this pine tree and landed. So I took some shots and they're technically not really the greatest shots in the world because of the lighting situation and the tree branches were in the way but I went for it anyways and lo and behold this one stopped in the tree and another one came up and they were actually mating here in this pine tree. All right, there's an otter crossing the road in front of me. He just laid down in the grass. That's really weird. And there he goes. <laughs> He's right up here. I wonder if we can get him with him in this ditch. There he is. Looks like there's two of them. Yeah, look, look. Can you see him back there? There's one on this little bank over here. He's eating. Really low light. So the, oh, he's looking right at the camera. So the pictures are really, it's hard to get some good pictures. And he was moving really, really fast. So I had to drop my shutter speed. So he's probably just going to be a blur, but we'll see. I don't think he likes me here. He's making strange noises. The otters never did come out of the shadows. They stayed down in this little ditch and stayed in the dark for the entire time I was there. But I did manage to get this one shot even though the light wasn't the greatest. And as I was out there doing that, I can hear tons of birds way up this way. Hawks and everything making all kinds of noise. And it's a little bit after eight, so the sun's rising up pretty high. It's gonna be hard to get good pictures soon, so. Hopefully I can find some stuff before the sun gets too harsh. There's a bunch of little songbirds all in these trees up here. And straight ahead, there are a bunch of vultures in the middle of the road sunning with their wings out. There's some kind of wading bird up here on the right. And then there's, I think, a red-shouldered hawk in the tree up here. So this is pretty cool. Finally, I got some good light, and this little palm warbler was a really good subject. I really like the color on this little bird. And they look, these little birds like this have so much detail and so much different color. They look like they've been hand painted. Really fascinating. So the wading bird I mentioned was a limpkin. And here's a good shot of that bird. And do you know what a group of limpkins is called? It's actually called a hobbling. So a group of limpkins is a hobbling of limpkins. That's not a joke. That's, that's really what they're called, a hobbling. I got some really good light on this beautiful red-shouldered hawk. And as you notice, though, there's like a tree branch that comes up right in the middle of its chest. So do you know the best way to remove a branch like this? You just step to the side a little bit, and then you can recompose and try to get another shot like this one. Check out the size of this turkey vulture with its wings outstretched. It was sitting here on this railing getting some sun. And it's easy to tell the difference between the black vultures and the turkey vultures. Look at the head. It, it looks like a turkey's head. That's where it gets that name. These monarch butterflies were everywhere, so I figured I would go ahead and grab some cool footage. This is filmed in 4K, and it's all handheld, by the way, these two short clips, and then downsampled to 1080p. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to get some pictures of these beautiful monarch butterflies, and I was curious to see how the Nikon 200-500mm lens would do on the butterflies, and it did really well. It uh, captured some gorgeous detail, as you can tell from these pictures, and it seems to render the colors pretty much perfect.
Check this out, all the vultures have taken to riding the thermals. Look at them all. I don't even know how many there are, what, maybe 30 of them? I don't recommend trying to photograph birds when they're riding the thermal heat waves like this, and here's why. There was an immature bald eagle flying with those vultures, and here's a picture of it. It's a pretty heavy crop, but when you're shooting in these thermals, you have to shoot through the heat haze, and that heat haze causes all kinds of atmospheric interference that just destroys the clarity of your photographs. Some sandhill cranes right here on my way out. Check out this sandhill crane. I believe this is a male and he's doing this dance to try to impress his female here. And you can't really see it in this video, but he was picking up rocks and sticks and dancing around with them. Um, I think this is referred to as the mating dance. <laughs> All right, I gotta get some pictures of that. I never get tired of taking pictures of these birds, especially when they're acting a little different like this one was. The lighting at this point in the day was not the greatest for photography. It was already late and all the sun was coming straight down onto the birds and it was really harsh, but I still managed to get a lot of really good pictures of these cranes. I was fortunate enough to spend about three months around a family of sandhill cranes and I documented the entire experience and condensed that three month period down into about 30 minutes. Um, I highly suggest watching the video. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll go ahead and put a link to it in this video right now. It's called The Sandhill Crane Story. Today's video was filmed at Blue Cypress Lake. I mentioned that in the beginning. The highlight of this place is the boat tours. They offer boat tours out of this little place where I was today, out onto the lake. And uh, apparently you can get pretty close to a lot of incredible wildlife. But I just wanted to see what I would find um, right around the boat ramp, around the boat dock, and driving. And it was actually extremely impressive, the amount of birds I saw. So I would imagine that if I saw this much stuff just right here around the boat ramps and around the entrance, that the actual boat tours would be quite productive. I'm going to leave this video with this beautiful picture of the Sandhill Crane in flight. And check out the wings on there. It almost looks like this crane has contrails coming off of the wings at a few of the feathers on both wings, top and bottom. It's mostly uh, noticeable on the bottom wing there. Um, I believe that's just a little bit of uh, feather material dangling off the back of the feathers, but it's it adds an interesting effect. I've, I've never seen it before in these birds, and I thought it was pretty interesting. There should be a little bumblebee in the upper left-hand corner. Go ahead and click on that and subscribe to my channel. I got a lot of videos planned. If you like the video, click the thumbs up, and always leave comments. It doesn't matter if it's good, bad, questions, whatever. I'll do my best to answer any questions, and I love hearing what everybody thinks of the videos.